many visitors to Chiriboya City, Puyen Province Kutsinan Mountain, over 85 meters high. This mountain has many interesting stories and a rich flora and fauna system. Someone says that the mountain adopts this name. Because it looks like a swallow with its wings spreading. No means swallow. However, the mountain is written in some documents. Used it to be an islet Chirihoya Bay home to numerous swallows. As time went by, the bay was turned into a plain. Nun mountain used to be covered with luxuriant trees, and thus attracting so many swallows, stocks and monkeys. The monkeys here were so clever that the French named the mountain, Montagne des Singes Monkey Mountain. However, when there were a lot of battles happening here, monkeys, storks and swallows, took turn to leave the mountain. A camp tower built during late 11th century, early 12th century, is a highlight of the mountain. The four-story quadrilateral tower nearly 25 meters in height, gets thinner as its top. Its decorating style, however, remains unchanged from the bottom to the top of tower. A stone slab carved into the lotus shape was placed on the top of the tower, and it is also the symbol of Linga of the Kham people's culture. Unlike other Kham towers in Bindin, Kanhoa, Pain Rang or My Son, this tower has simple interior without decorating patterns. The tower with elaborate details is an architectural masterpiece. It stands the test of the time, deserving the title of the National Landscape Relic. When you reach the top of Nen Mountain, you can see the panorama of Jirihoya City and the Durang River with four bridges. Chukwang Pagoda was built in 1797. Fat Chien, a Buddhist monk in the 36th generation of the Lam Ti Zen sect, was its first chief monk. Located on the top of Xu and Dai Mountain, the pagoda faces the East Sea. While stones around the pagoda make it look even more mysterious. The Tess White also called the Trang White Stone Pagoda. Earlier in 1793, Monk Fak Chien built a grass roof tub here, to translate Avatar Sekha Sutra. Four years later, he built a thatch-roofed pagoda. As many famous monks practiced Buddhism here, the Nuyan dynasty granted Sakchu characters to its name in 1889. The pagoda is burnt down in a fire in 1929. Monks here had to raise fun to repair the pagoda. This can be said to be a precious object of Chukwang Pagoda. This bell weights 330 kilograms. Monk Fap Ngu had it cast in the capital of Pugshuan and brought it here. Chukwang Pagoda was badly damaged with Thai. 
The one we see today was restored on the basis of the original structure of the pagoda. The gate remains intact. The repaired pagoda generally still has ancient beauty. In particular, the tower garden is part of the old structure of the pagoda. As the pagoda keeper told me, the remains of chief monks of the pagoda are worshipped here. Each stupa has its own scale and height. All of them have subtle patterns, as reliefs and statues of animals. The garden of stupa can be said to be an important part of the Datrangchu Quang Pagoda. Chu Quang became popular partly because of mango trees, over 200 years old, planted here. Legend has it that in the Nuyan dynasty, a mandarin dropped in the pagoda and had a chance to taste a mango of the drang. He told the king about that tasty mango. Since then, monks at Chu Quang Pagoda offered the king their mangoes every year. As told in another story, every time Lord Nuyan An had his worship anchored at Shu and Dai Bay and tasted a mango from the pagoda. During the battle with Taesan army, he loved the amazingly sweet mango. Mangoes from the Trang Pagoda, together with Lanzans in Quang name, became precious fruits for the king. These mango trees are over 200 years ago. A trunk is too big for a person to put his arms around. These trees were recognized as heritage trees of Vietnam as they carry historical and cultural values and are part of the history of Chu Quang Pagoda. As the chief monk told us, these mango trees were planted before the establishment of the pagoda. They have small white flowers, small but sweet and aromatic fruits. The whole area will be full of their pleasant smell when the mangoes get ripe. Puyen is famous for unspoiled poetic beaches and bays. These are must-see places in this province. Located 55 kilometers from Cherihoya City, Xu and Dai Bay is a scenic spot of Puyen. We will get on aboard to admire the beauty of the bay. Xu and Dai Bay covers an area of 13,000 ha in Song Cau Town and Jian District. It is surrounded by mountains. The bay has a lot of gorgeous beaches whose pure beauty can enchant any visitor. Trees covered mountains with amazing green, turquoise water. And cool wind can drive your daily worries away. Sure and Dai Bay can still keep its unspoiled beauty. We can see a lot of cage systems where people raise fish and shrimps along the bay.
the captain told me that it took us nearly two hours to visit the bay. We don't have to worry about big waves because the sea is really calm here. When the wind blows against your face, you will realize how fresh and cool the sea is. Yeah, an island home to numerous swiftlets is over there. People collect bird nests there to create a local specialty. Seeing a sand hill here is out of my expectation. It has said that the shape of the hill is changed hour after hour, depending on the direction of the wind. Our next destination is a must-see place in Puyen. It has a unique interesting place. Let us visit Gundidia. Gundidia is a masterpiece of nature. The basal rock with special shapes can enchant any visitor to the site. According to studies, these basalt rocks were formed during the activities of volcanoes in Van Hoel Plateau, about 30 kilometers from here. 20 years ago, lava spewed from the crater to the coast. It got frozen immediately because of the cold water of the sea. The newly formed rock cracked, creating vertical hexagonal columns in a row. Gundadia is special because of the sense that the stone columns here are arranged vertically and neatly. From a distance, they look like piles of dishes. The majestic beauty of stone columns makes the site an amazing tourist attraction.
Dai Bay, apart from its scenic views, is where locals practice aquaculture. They began doing this in the 1900s and now, nearly 3,000 households. In Song Siau town raise lobsters, fish and oysters here. Local life gets better thanks to the shrimp farming for export.